Assalamu alaikum everyone. Our guest today is somebody who is a very prominent political political figure and a very very hard working human rights activist in Pakistan. She has been a member of the provincial assembly since 2013 and is currently working with PMLN. Um Hina Pervez Bhatt is a passionate advocate for women's rights, social justice and democracy and has been actively involved in various social and political causes throughout her career. Please welcome Ms. Hina Pervez Bhatt on the Chit Chat Show with Rabeel. Assalamu alaikum ma'am, how are you? Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you Rabeel for inviting Thank me. You so It's very exciting It's to be pleasure. part of this. Ma'am, uh you know we've always looked at you as a political leader, you know, somebody who's constantly been under the eye of the media, you know, with a close association with a very prominent party in Pakistan. But today on this show we would like to look at you, you know, through a personal lens rather a, you know, political lens. So, uh let's get ready for that. I'm very happy I want people to look at me through the personal lens. I think that's more important. Sometimes perceptions what people develop about you isn't reality. So doing shows like this helps people in my perception. That's wonderful and I think people should do that because you're beautiful at a glance. I can tell you off camera. I can tell everybody off camera. So I really want to look into your soul as well. Okay, so the first question I have for you is uh tell us something you know something that's very interesting about you you know a fact that people don't usually know about or you know they don't know through the very political lens wali baat so aisi wo kaun si cheez hogi so one interesting fact that i've recently developed uh, since the last two years is that i started reading the quran with the tajweed oh, because initially i thought uh, you know I had a little like you're saying the fumbles I wasn't so sure that you know I knew how to read the book so I mm-hmm. took online I'm taking right now oh. online classes of tajweed Oh wow and I started from the qaida and mm-hmm. now alhamdulillah I've uh, completed 20 subaras in Ramzan oh, doing one uh, uh, Quran subara every a single day but that helps me you know initially i didn't have the confidence you know when i was i started with the qaida my son was like kind of making fun of me he's like aapne dobara start kar diya fir mujhe laga zindagi mein hum har cheez ke liye time nikalte hain hum siyasat ke liye time nikalte hain family ke liye time nikalte hain career ke liye time nikalte hain jo most important cheez hai na duniya ki wo hai knowing this magic book of course the holy quran so many alhamdulillah usko tajweed se start kiya hai maine usko samajhna shuru kiya hai basic tarjuma and tajweed and that has actually uh, changed my life wow. jise kehte hain na ke rabana atina fi duniya hasanata wa fi akhirati hasanata wa ki azab nar ke zindagi mein like uh, the only way of success is knowing your religion following that and this is a recent change so i don't think people know about it and i don't you know mujhe koi dafa logo ne kaha ke isko you know you should be saying this fact but i thought no this is my personal connection with allah taala but i think that's one thing i'm really proud of and this is a milestone for me inshallah taala and i'll keep on doing that mashallah that's that's wonderful to hear and i feel like ke uh, it, it gives you a lot of peace personally as well you know okay the next question that we would like to ask you was ke thoda shuru se shuru karte hain what was your childhood like like walk us through that a little bit you know uh, what was it like and do you have any funny or you funny or interesting stories that you like to share with us yes my childhood would be i was from convent okay i was a cute plump kid i'm sure i'm pretty sure <laughs> but you know like i was not never that you know i was like a plump kid you know <laughs> so and i was a shy and in- introvert mm-hmm. and uh, i used to be hanging out in the library reading books oh wow so what i am now right now is very different from what i was in my childhood because uh with me entering politics and being in the media i i had to you know break my comfort zone mm-hmm. till now even now when a camera comes in front of me or when i have to stand in the assembly and speak mm-hmm. so i still have that sword hanging on my head and the palpitations and you know i yes. have to you know i have a big i have a fear of public speaking mm-hmm. and speaking in front of the camera so this is something i have to work on so i was a very shy kid you know just busy in eating playing <laughs> sports and studying Oh what was your favorite sport? Um I used to play baseball. Oh lovely. I used to play baseball during my O levels. <laughs> okay. Uh next question. Um you know 
who if any you know are some of your biggest inspirations uh tell us one name before you entered politics and one after you did so and my, why i'm so sorry yeah, my biggest inspiration till now has been my dad okay because uh he was an entrepreneur he belonged to a very uh moderate background mm-hmm. and i remember given we used to go in school we didn't even have a car so we used to go in a pickup in which all the students used to be there i used to go to convent but i've seen my father working from scratch he uh, revolutionized the refrigeration industry the first deep freezer was made in the house wow and uh, the way mujhe yaad hai bhi mujhe story batate hain ki jab unhone pehla freezer banaya to jab wo kisi shop pe keh rahe the ki ja ke hamara ye experiment kar le to tab ye concept hota tha ki कोक की बोतलें ना बर्फ की बास्केट पॉकेट्स में रखते थे सो टेलिंग देम कन्विंसिंग देम दैट यू नो ट्राई दिस डीप फ्रीजर एंड यू विल सी द डिफरेंस सो आई हैव सीन हिम वर्किंग फ्रॉम स्क्रैच एंड टिल नाउ ही इज माय मेंटर आल्सो बिकॉज ही इज टॉट मी ऑल द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ इंटेग्रिटी ऑल द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ ऑनेस्टी एंड आई बिलीव दैट यू नो ही इज वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग एज अ a person who supported me throughout you know i've gone through a life of you know, ups and downs and but he's been there jab mai i was going through a bad time of my personal life crisis he told me no you have to uh, join uh, mba you have to continue your studies abhi bhi maine i think a lot of people don't know that i just recently gave my gre exam and okay, wow. I, i'm going to start my mphil again wow. and uske behind me mere father hain he says that kaam aur career chalta rehta hai lekin you have to not leave your education business so now that we connect the dots we can see you know why there is you know that aura of success around you so i think it comes from your father and you know constant uh, learning of a lifetime um okay the next question uh during covid jaise ki aapko pata hai ki you know a lot of people explore different you know parts of their personality so uh prior to that and after that you know how do you spend your free time and you know what are the few things that you know purani hobbies jo aapne you know abhi dobara se retouch kiye honge ya phir kuch naya explore kiya apne bare mein so what are those things okay covid was a time that uh, all of us went through a lot you know my yes. uh, like i was talking about my father my father mm-hmm. was in london when covid mm-hmm. happened and mm-hmm. he was one of the first people to mm-hmm. uh, suffer from covid and oh, i was no. alone at home with my son so that time was very very difficult for me because you know i was scared i didn't know uh, what was happening so he was he was there my whole family was there for 2 3 months but what i realized in covid was how important family relations are yes how important it is for example we take traveling as a you know it's okay we can just hop on the plane and travel no anywhere just, in the world yeah. but covid made us realize that all these things are maybe luxuries that they're enjoying then the other thing was the online the online zoom meetings yes. and online work so i think that is something that covid really taught us yes. but i got to spend a lot of quality time with my son and um, you know so there was one to one bonding and we realized how important mobility is for us we realized how important health is for us that we can take things for granted of course for sure for sure and alhamdulillah for getting out of it yeah. fine yes um okay the next question would be we know that you know we do get an idea if you see your socials and everything that you are kind of you know wanderlust soul so what would you be you know your favorite travel destination if one So I love traveling, and I think, I think all of us do. I got that right, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you got that right. And you know, I've traveled a lot of uh, places, but I would surely say my favorite place would be uh, South Africa. I went okay. to uh, Cape Town, and there's the Table Mountain, which is a flat mm-hmm. mountain, which they say that this is the table of God. So oh, wow. it's amazing, and everyone should go visit Cape Town. Other than that, I loved Morocco. That was quite okay. different, and uh, I enjoyed the hammam. So traveling has always been my. But because of COVID, recently I haven't traveled anywhere. So um, I was able to go. Uh, but uh, last year I was able to go to Geneva for the World Economic Forum. Oh wow! Uh, annual like the uh, mm-hmm. we had a young global leaders meeting, so we went there. So that was amazing. I loved. I oh. love Switzerland also. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. 
Okay, the next question is, we're, you know, leaning onto the, you know, the political spectrum a little bit more. Uh, what made you decide to pursue a political career in the first place? Like, what was that one final push that you thought that this is my time to, you know, just enter the world of politics now? I mean, what I feel is that I'm not a master planner in my life. Mm -hmm. And I feel that Allah Ta'ala has bigger plans for you. Of course. For a person like me, I never thought of entering politics. But all this went in 2013 when the party got uh, two-third major majority mm -hmm. and they had extra seats so mm -hmm. they asked uh, women to apply for their CVs and I applied and I got into politics in 2013 but that has been a revolutionary journey for me because before that uh, after I graduated after I did my MBA from Lums in 2010 I opened up my own fashion business and a yes. uh, brand of clothing and with that uh, I was working with home-based workers mm -hmm. and when I was working with home-based workers I could see that a lot of uh, women who were working from the houses were not getting their uh, basic rights. May that be their uh, minimum wage, may mm -hmm. that be other rights. So I thought uh, Allah Ta'ala has given me this opportunity to be a uh, a, like a bigger spokesperson for these people and when I got to, to be part of the provincial assembly mm -hmm. so I was at actually you know a spokesperson for a lot of women who have been oppressed for a lot of uh, minorities who needed inclusiveness so that was how it was never a master plan but that was a lot of Wonderful. Okay, I've seen that you very passionately talk about women's rights, right? So, uh, would it be right to say that this is that one thing that you feel like you would want to use your influence and, you know, just uh, your position for? That is that one thing that you really want to change and begin with uh, when it comes to Pakistan and how women are treated in the country? So, uh, I would never want to use my influence on anything. But yeah, I would want to work for... Uh, the people of Pakistan, for me, they matter a lot. Mm -hmm. For example, at this point of time when we see the overall uh, scenario of how women have been oppressed, there's so many issues of women if we start talking, there are yes. issues of domestic violence. So when I uh, was part of the assembly from the 2013 to 18 tenure, we were able to uh, uh, legislate and able to get the Women Empowerment Bill passed in which we got uh, uh, violence against women centers all across Punjab and that I thought was an excellent step because you know a lot of women are going through domestic violence a lot of women are going through other issues so for me uh, working and uh, raising the voice for women their issues uh, for domestic health the, their minimum wage for having the home-based workers being recognized and their rights being you know properly addressed for me it's most important just say a lot of people used to tell me that you're part of the assembly but some other resolutions are submit karate my reason of submitting a resolution is if i see something wrong happening in the country or if i see something wrong that's happening it's my responsibility to raise their voice in the assembly I think that's a wonderful leadership quality and about the bill, I really want to put my hands together for that because I'm very passionate about this stuff myself. Um, okay, you just mentioned, uh, you know, your fashion brand and we were going to, you know, hop onto that later, but I would want to insert it right now uh, with your career in politics and your fashion brand as well. So, uh, I would like to know how do you manage both the things simultaneously? So, the good thing is that now I'm not no more managing my fashion brand. But it's why did brand. that happen? Because I got so much involved in politics, you know, I I'm a person who's very, very, some some of my friends tell me you have a tunnel vision. Whatever I do, I want to really, really excel in that. So when I uh, got very busy in politics and mm -hmm. I 100% I feel this is a bigger responsibility for me. So I, for the temporary, for the time being, I wrapped it up. So although, I love, but what happens is, what good thing is that all of my friends are designers, so they sponsor my clothes. Oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, okay. Uh, one more thing. Uh, what has been, you know, according to you, one of the most challenging moments in your political career this far? You know, if there is any one instance that you can just point out and, you know, let us know about that. And many, for women mm -hmm. to enter politics is a very, very different field, difficult field. And especially uh, when I see younger progressive 
women like you and I see all the students yes. at the campus. Uh, for me, it's for utmost important that women mm -hmm. should, uh, you know, join politics. But it's not a not an easy job. For me, it's difficult. You know, people label you. If you're a designer, they would say that you're a fashion model, for example. If you're normal looking, they would, you know, again label you. Yeah. So it's a challenge, you know, and uh, getting the utmost. Um, for example, a lot of times. Uh, men who are in higher position in politics feel that you know uh, women would not have any brains please but tell they, us about this but yes they don't know that women are more hard working they are more dedicated and they're smarter than them. and very intuitive which is i think very so important for me, i think uh, you know it has been a challenge but now when i go to the halkas mm -hmm. what i started doing is i started coming my head I, people start taking you maybe more seriously yes and more respect awesome. and uh, so it's been a it's been a journey but alhamdulillah it's been good oh, wonderful wonderful also uh, we did know that you were uh, also taking care of you know uh, the business that you know that comes to you as a part of you know your family and you know that your father started so are you currently in touch with that as well or is it just politics right so now so right now it's just politics but okay, obviously wonderful. we're like three sisters so mm. uh, my father uh, puts the responsibility in me so i help him manage also but at this point of time, my sole focus has been politics and especially youngsters. So mm -hmm. I've been just recently uh, been, uh, you know, put as the Lahore Youth Coordinator. So that has been an achievement for me because yes. I feel that, you know, mobilizing the youth and for me, uh, mobilizing the youth, regardless of the political polarization has been a challenge mm -hmm. but for me i believe that you know i want to make all the youngsters the young global leaders for example of 2050 chance uh, the uh, i was selected as the young global leaders but uh, young global leaders by the world economic forum in 2016 so i got a chance to uh, go to Harvard and studied for five wow. weeks at the Harvard Tour of Kennedy and you know I studied uh, politics and leadership and that was because of the World Economic Forum before that I had just studied in Pakistan so and then I also got a chance to go visit Oxford and study there for five weeks wow. so I got a chance um, and uh, but I want each one of the youngsters to get those chances so for me, that is my next um, goal, that I want to help the younger leaders, them becoming the world global leaders. That's my agenda for them. Wonderful leadership qualities. I'm just getting impressed, you know, uh, each question by. Uh, okay, um, I would like to ask you that personally, right now in 2023, where Pakistan is, what do you feel like is the biggest challenge that our constitu constituency faces right now? And how are you working on it? Uh, how are you working to improve that? Okay, for me, the biggest challenge at this point of time, just a quick eye after I've been um, put as the Lahore Youth Coordinator, has mm -hmm. been, uh, you know, mobilizing and channeling the youth. Just then, I've come and I've told you that polarization, we have low level of tolerance here. Of course. Uh, some uh, because of some leaders, some kids have lost the. Uh, moral and the social fabric so channelizing them towards their right potential mm -hmm. you know regardless of whatever party you belong to yes uh, each one of the student each one of the youth representative is important to us for important to me for me uh, giving the right job opportunities um, um, having the the right uh, you know, education for them. So that has been the sole responsibility. I am shocked that every child, if he graduates, he will get a good job opportunity. Those who, for example, are not studying, they will give them entrepreneurship skills, they will give them skill training. We will give them our children to our children. They will take them where they deserve it. Of course, of course. And that is the only way we can help. Yes, and inshallah, I hope that you really see success in what you're striving to do. Uh, Ma'am, I would really want to talk about, uh, I know that you're a very active human rights activist. And so please tell us something about that, uh, you know, just, you know, because I know that you're very passionate about, you know, women and, you know, 
getting them better rights. So what are you doing on that front when it comes to, you know, if there's any foundation you would like to talk about or, you know, just something, please I'll give So I've advice. been working with a couple of uh, foundations. I was working with Faces Pakistan and they were working with the home-based workers. Similarly, mm -hmm. I also volunteered for a lot of causes. But for me, I would personally say the most important thing is uh, the rights of women, uh, mm -hmm. the way um, a lot of women go through domestic violence, for example, they're not yes. able to raise their voice. Recently, I was able to visit the uh, National Incubation Center of Lungs, and there I saw this uh, girl with, who came up with a project of a defense app in which if somebody, for example, if, uh, there's an app in which anyone, if suppose it's hitting you or it's unfair to you, so it activates the app and it has a power glove. So I'm work, wow. currently working on a lot of uh, projects with that. And wow. uh, so I think uh, giving them, if someone has gone through a somebody who has gone through domestic violence or whatever, for them it's difficult to raise their voice. Yes. Being able to give them that support, being able to tell them that it's okay, we are there to protect you. The system will be there to protect you. We as women will be there to raise your voice. I think that's the most important job we need to do. That exactly, I totally agree with that. So, we are offbeat, we are going to fun questions ki taraf aajate, and towards our last segment. Uh, we call it the rapid fire, like everybody does. Uh, so, let's get to that. Now, the answers to these questions, Specifically, specifically 10 seconds ka time aapko dungi, hai? Je foreign, foreign, the first thing in your mind and you have to give it to us okay so I'll ask you questions and you have to reply to that uh, okay the very first question is what was the last book that you read that you could put down Alchemist again and again I read it every three months it oh, gives wow. me my goal setting I love it it's like the free wanderer if you're looking for your purpose in life I think each one of us needs to read it. And also the long walk, walk to freedom, Nelson Mandela. He's been oh. a um, you know, person who's worked for uh, the democracy, for equality and for rights. Nelson Mandela, I think, would be a breath of fresh air in countries like ours at any point in life. So yes, wow, wonderful choices. Okay, the next question will be, what is your favorite comfort food? <laughs> I love uh, Japanese, I love uh, sushi and I love pasta and lots of cheese. So comfort food is food and ramen and all that. So after my whole uh, uh, long day, I watch Netflix with my son and we eat lots of pasta and cheese and you know, sometimes order Chinese and soup. So you're telling me you're eating a lot of cheese and I am a big cheese fanatic myself, so I look at you and I can't tell that you eat no, the I'm amount sure. of cheese. I'm, I'm obviously eating okay, cheese days, but wonderful. sometimes I try to follow the intuitive fasting also. Wow, eat. brave. So brave. Uh, okay. Okay, if uh, you know, if you could have one superpower in the world, uh, which one would you have and why? Any superpower would, would that would eradicate the poverty in this world. I would love to have that. And right now what I want is, I want speed in which I can go to all my halkas, in which I can mobilize all the youth and, you know, be, be able to, you know, help them reach them. Wonderful. Okay. Chai or coffee? Chai. Lovely. They see at heart. I'm <laughs> waiting. I'm always waiting for my afthani and a cup of tea. Okay, uh, what is the best advice you would have ever received and who gave it to you? The best advice I've ever received is to keep on breaking my comfort zone. And who my gave dad it to you? and my other like um, mentors have always taught me this because in life it's always easy to you know, give up. It's always easy to remain in the comfort zone. But it's a challenge, for example, I believe without you have to challenge yourself every day to break your comfort zone. May that be sitting in front of the TV, may that be sitting on the talk shows, may that be, you know, changing yourself, going to the halkas and mobilizing with the youth. That is the big best advice I've got. And since that, I make, 
I've given myself a challenge that every day I promise myself that I will break my comfort zone. Wonderful. I'm actually getting my own dose of motivation from you right now. Uh, okay, if you could have dinner with any one historical figure in the world, who would it be? And again, why? Kaidyaz uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Okay, and why? Because uh, because of him we have Pakistan today. Because of him, uh, the he as the he is the best person who has struggled for democracy. He is the person who, in his first speech, said that women will be standing right with men in the political forefront. So his struggle of politics, his struggle for us to make this homeland Pakistan where we are right now, in which we are getting our rights, mm -hmm. he is one inspiration. And I've read a lot of books about him, and I still do. So he's one historical figure I would like to have uh, dinner. So he can help me guide towards, you know, what was his idea, vision, vision yes. towards making Pakistan and ask him, well, where are we going wrong? How we can correct it again? Of course, of course. Um, okay, what's that one thing uh, or that one advice that you would uh, want to give yourself, uh, you know, the younger version of yourself uh, that you didn't have at that point and you would want to go back in time and tell her that today? I've always been a very naive person and I still am. So, Alhamdulillah, I would say that's a good quality also. I do not, yes. I do not have hypocrisy. I'm a very keen hearted person for that reason. Sometimes I'm not able to differentiate between the right and wrong people. And uh, so, what I've learned now and the best advice I would give myself right now is being able to differentiate between the right and wrong. And that too, I've asked Allah for the uh, right, you know, Katena Usko, you ask Allah Ta'ala for his hikmat, you ask Allah Ta'ala for his guidance and bazurgi so that we can be able to differentiate between the right and wrong. Yes. But I also believe that Allah Ta'ala always have, has a master plan. Sometimes you make wrong choices. Yes. Uh, but with time, I would, uh, if I revisit, so I would have done uh, some decisions which I wouldn't have taken before. Okay, wonderful. Uh, okay, uh, last question now, ma'am. If you had to choose between no TV for life and or no social media, which one would you be choosing? No TV. No TV? I You're okay. I have to run my Twitter account. I have to run <laughs> well, my very important Instagram. Video. That's where I... Because now social media is the forum in which I can, you know, address the needs for people. It's some platform I can be able to address my uh, followers. So any day. Everything converges, yes. I'm not even a TV person. Okay. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. It was so lovely talking to you, ma'am. It was, it, it's really been an inspiration. You know, uh, guys, I actually sat down here just, you know, for another interview. But what I did meet and, you know, what I did see was a beautiful insight into life and, you know, my personal dose of motivation. So I would really like to thank uh, the very beautiful and, you know, with some great leadership qualities, ma'am Hina Parvez But uh, It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for Thank being you. on the show. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. This was the Chit Chat Show with Rabel, and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you and Allah Hafiz.